Well, it looks like everybody remembered to turn their clocks back. We didn't get anybody here at Sunday school time like I was hoping, <laughs> being here an hour early. Um, some of our late ones are here, though, so that's good. But uh, anyway, we're continuing our study of James. James has just been talking about taming the tongue, and now he starts talking about how our tongue relates to what's coming out of our heart and the sources of wisdom and understanding that we're using in our everyday life, in our everyday speech, in our everyday action. And what are those sources of wisdom and, and which are the right ones that we should be tapping into? So let's get right into this. James chapter 3, verse 13. Who is wise and understanding among you? You know, uh, in the first part of chapter 3, he was talking to teachers, religious leaders and teachers, and the fact that they have a great responsibility and that they'll be judged more strictly because of the great responsibility of what they're doing and teaching people. And so perhaps this is part of who James is talking to here as far as wise and understanding, because that's what teachers were thought of, that they were wise that they were understanding. But I really think it applies to really all Christians. Who, at least who think they are anyway, who is wise and understanding among you? Let him show it by his good life, by deeds done in the humility that comes from wisdom. Again, James was talking earlier about faith and deeds. Here he's saying, if you have wisdom... Let that also be shown in your deeds. Your wisdom should be reflected in our speech and in our deeds, in our words and in our actions. And if we think we are wise and understanding, we should let that be shown in what we do. It should be shown that we are using our wisdom appropriately. Because, see, wisdom is different from just knowledge. Knowledge can be just book learning. Knowledge can just be something that we understand, that we know, that we've read or whatever, or studied, and we have knowledge about something. But wisdom is when we're able to apply what we know. And so wisdom must be seen in not only what we say, but also in our actions, in good deeds. So, who is wise and understanding among you? Let him show it by his good life by deeds done in humility that comes from wisdom. The other word I want to look at here for just a moment is humility. You see, a wise person doesn't need to brag about what they've done. When you are bragging about what you've done, you're showing a great lack of wisdom. So humility is a part of wisdom. Humility is a part of understanding what godly wisdom is and understanding is all about. So, what does a wise and godly person do, according to James here? He lives a life of steady goodness, filled with good deeds that he doesn't need to brag about. But when I say he, I mean he or she. You know, it's for both of us, both genders. Um, but that's the point. You're doing good deeds, you're living a steady life of that, and you don't need to brag about. You see, our wisdom is revealed in our character. And our character is revealed both by our words and by our actions. Let's continue on in verse 14. But if you harbor bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not, do not boast about it or deny the truth. You see, we are not wise if we're filled with jealousy if we're filled with selfish ambition. Again, in our words, that can come out, that we're selfish and that we're ambitious. It can come out in our words, and it comes out in our actions. And when we are showing ourselves to be selfish and envious and jealous, we're showing a lack of wisdom. If you harbor bitter envy and selfish ambition in your heart, First of all, don't boast about it because you're showing a lack of wisdom. And also, don't deny it. Don't deny the truth of that. 
If you really are and someone points it out to you, don't say, no, I'm not, no, I'm not. It's the worst kind of lie because what you're doing is you're lying to yourself here. James is saying you need to honestly look at yourself and recognize your lack of wisdom at that point. If you have to brag about stuff or if you are envious and jealous of things or if you're selfishly motivated. And if someone points that out to you, be wise enough to accept that and understand that and not try to lie about it and deny the truth of it. Again, as faith is shown in deeds, so wisdom is shown in our words and actions. See, this is all related to what James has been saying up to this point. When he was talking about faith without deeds is dead, so is wisdom without wise actions is a dead wisdom. It doesn't really show it shows just the opposite. Everything has to line up. Everything has to work together for it to really show. Verse 15 and 16. Such wisdom. He's talking about the wisdom he had just been talking about where there was bitter envy and selfish ambition going on. Such wisdom, in quotation marks, in my particular uh, translation, I don't know if it's in yours or not, but such wisdom does not come down from heaven, but is earthly, unspiritual, of the devil. For where you have envy and selfish ambition, there you find disorder and every evil practice. You see, when, you, when you're filled with that, don't try to say that you're wise, because you're not. It's earthly, it's unspiritual, and it's from the devil. It's not godly wisdom whatsoever. True wisdom comes from God. Selfishness and envy and jealousy, that comes straight from Satan. That comes from the devil. So don't act like you're wise and don't think that you are wise. That kind of wisdom, in quotation marks, is earthly, unspiritual, and of, of the devil. And what is the result of it? For where you have that envy and selfish ambition, there you find disorder and every evil practice. You know what? Most of the problems that we have that causes disorder relates to selfishness and envy and jealousy. And we need to be really, really careful about that. Jealousy and selfishness is not of God. That doesn't come from a wisdom that we gain from God. That comes only from another source that James clearly designates as coming from Satan. And how can we know that? Because of this disorder that comes from that. The evil, the conflict, the chaos. That's what comes from jealousy and selfish ambition. Conflict. Disorder. Jesus said in Matthew 15, 18, and 19, the things that come out of the mouth come from the heart. For out of the heart come evil thoughts. So the question this morning that James wants to ask is this, where are you getting your wisdom and understanding from? Are you getting it from God or are you getting it from earthly, unspiritual sources which he identifies with Satan? Where's your wisdom and understanding coming from? Where's the basis of your actions and your words coming from? And Jesus identifies it as coming from the heart. And it was related to those that were talking about you know, taking in unclean things and, and not washing their hands ceremonially properly and all that. And James, Jesus is saying, you just don't understand. What you eat, what goes into the mouth isn't what defiles you, it's what comes out of you, out of your heart. Because that's where, as Jesus says, for out of the heart come evil thoughts. So what is your source of wisdom and understanding? this morning. That's what James wants to challenge you to think about. What is your wisdom, understanding, and knowledge? What is influencing you? What wisdom is influencing you in your daily life? Let's continue on with verse 17 and 18. He's already talked about earthly unspiritual wisdom. Now he talks about the other side of that. But the wisdom that comes from heaven is first of all pure. Pure. Holy, 
clean, then peace loving. It's not going to provide conflict and chaos and evil. It's going to be peace loving. It's considerate. It's submissive. It's full of mercy. Forgiveness. Not bitterness towards other people when they've done us wrong. It's full of mercy and forgiveness. And good fruit, good deeds. Impartial and sincere. Peacemakers who sow in peace raise a harvest of righteousness. So again, he's contrasting what is the result of the wisdom and understanding that we gain from this world? Earthly, unspiritual, satanic wisdom. Versus the wisdom that comes from God that shows itself forth in these wonderful qualities. And you can say, as, as you talked about earlier with faith and deeds, you can say all you want to, oh, I have a lot of faith. And he's saying it doesn't mean anything if it doesn't show forth in deeds. And here he's moving to wisdom and saying, you can say you're wise all you want to. You can say I've got godly wisdom that I, that I look to God for my, as my source of wisdom, but if it doesn't show forth in your actions and in your words, you're fooling yourself. You're lying to yourself. And don't deny it. But you're only fooling yourself doesn't show forth in a proper attitude, in a proper way of behavior and words, you're lying to yourself. I have a couple of slides here that kind of illustrates those two points. When our speech is motivated by Satan, it is full of bitter envy, jealousy, selfish ambition, thinking only about myself, not thinking about others whatsoever, earthly desire unspiritual thoughts and ideas and disorder. Do you see that in yourselves? Don't deny the truth of it. If you see it in yourselves, don't try to fool yourself. Don't lie to yourself. Admit the truth of it. And he finally got there. <laughs> Evil. That's what's the result of that. When that is our source of motivation, when that's our source of wisdom and understanding. But when our speech is motivated by God, the next slide. Yeah, when our speech is motivated by God and His wisdom, it is full of love and purity. Go ahead and just put them all in there peace and gentleness, consideration for others, submission to God. Mercy and kindness, sincerity and impartiality and right. So is our heart and our mind, is our actions and our words filled with this? Then we know that our speech is motivated and our wisdom is coming from a godly source. Recognize that know it stay true to it what is our source of wisdom genuine godly wisdom is revealed through a lack of prejudice and partiality remember that's what he talked about earlier he's kind of wrapping things up he doesn't just forget where he's been how did he start earlier talked about when a brother comes in and and you want to give partiality to the brother who has rings on his fingers and the nice clothes and everything else, and you want to give him the best seat in the house, but yet someone comes in who is not as well off, and you want to put him on the back row, you want to put him on the floor somewhere, sit over here, you know, uh, hide yourself out of the way here. Impartiality, prejudice, that has no place in the church. Genuine godly wisdom is revealed in a lack of that prejudice, a lack of partiality. It's revealed in the good deeds that he went into after that, faith and deeds, and, as he just talked about last week, a controlled tongue. That's when we know we have genuine wisdom from God, when we are seeing all of those things being wrapped up in our hearts and lives. We're not showing partiality. We're not prejudiced. We are doing good deeds. We are 
having the Holy Spirit controlling our tongues rather than just letting it run wild. And that's what we're seeing coming out of our speech, those positive qualities. So again, the question is, what is your source of wisdom and understanding today? Is it God or is it Satan? Let's continue on in the ver- into chapter 4. Chapter 4, verses 1 and 2. What causes fights and quarrels among you? Don't they come from your desires that battle within you? You want something but don't get it. You kill and covet but you cannot have what you want. You quarrel and fight. You do not have because you do not ask God. You see, 99% of problems that we have in our relationships, both personal and in the church, has to do with one word, selfishness. Wanting our own way. Our own evil desires over what God wants for his church. So he turns to the church here.